So it's been a minute since my last devlog and honestly this is the longest amount of time without a devlog being posted. So some of you guys may be new or you might have just found my channel and I wanted to welcome you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video hit that sub button and there's a Patreon in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. In the last devlog, we finally got our enemies feeling a bit more flimsy and floppy and added in an awesome new enemy, and in addition got just some overall features rounded out. And after doing all of that, it just kinda went dark. Before we get right into this devlog, I did want to apologize for the lack of devlogs. School got the best of me and well, it's been quite hectic recently. But with that all being said, I only had time on the weekends to actually work on my project and therefore I didn't have enough to share until now. But let me tell you guys, we got some awesome stuff we can showcase to you guys and I'm very excited to bring this video to you. Some of our older viewers might be in the know that we actually did get this system working in our very first AI attempt, and that is fleeing. Stings the nostrils. In a good way. Yeah. Brian, I'm gonna be honest with you, that smells like pure gasoline. A brief overview for the ones that are not in the know, I implemented the system into the AI after seeing something similar in a small game called Breath of the Wild. Now that I look back on it, I kinda, I say that quite a bit. Nintendo, please don't sue me. But basically, the enemies run to the nearest weapon and pick it up before attacking the player. This time, it was an absolute breeze. I wish that was true. It wasn't really a breeze, I was lying. This time I had some issues getting our root motion system to work with the fleeing behavior, and honestly, it had no reason to be this difficult. All I had to do was literally control C and control V, change up some variables, but of course, it's Unity, it wanted to be quite difficult to accomplish. So I guess, this means there's only one thing I can do. So after literal, literal days, someone on the Brackies Discord appointed me to a single function that would solve all of my problems. But the kicker is, it gets better. That I have already used this exact function before, but I used it the wrong way. Oh, so yeah, read the documentation, kids. It saves. It literally saves brain cells. But not only did I want him to run away, but I also wanted the enemy to be able to run to the nearest weapon and pick it up. This was literally the easy part, just slap some tasks into the behavior trees and bada bang bada boom. We basically ripped off Zelda, but Nintendo please, please don't, please don't sue me. Oh, adding this just one simple feature made the enemies feel like they actually belong in this game, but what if... No, 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 we shouldn't do that. But like, <laughs> what if we connect the ragdoll system to this mechanic? We make him drop his weapons, and then he has to go and pick it back up. Hmm. <laughs> So after having this brilliant idea and having an understanding of exactly how I wanted to implement it, I thought this would be a pretty quick addition to add. And then the errors started to hit and they just kept on hitting and they just, just never stopped. Like, what do you mean there isn't a reference to this object? Oh, wait, there's not a rich body connected to this object. I guess that's what you call a rookie mistake. <laughs> Thank you. 
But finally, after a miracle and a half, we got this in and it works pretty well. I was thinking of making the sword initially fly backwards out of the orc's hand or in the direction he's actually being swung into, but with the way I implemented the system, there's going to be a few complications, so uh, I'll pass. So instead, I decided that adding some torque, or how I like calling it the spinny spin, to the weapon and making it fly upwards would, you know, look pretty sick if I say so myself. And well, I was right. Getting this entire system working together and playing well just, it feels amazing. The orcs feel like they actually react to the environment and overall it was an awesome feature to implement, even though it took me an entire week. I guess I just am like some type of bad programmer or some, I, I don't know, let me know down in the comments below. Okay, now for the actual fun part. Since the last devlog, we got our sound designer, Do or Dex. I still cannot pronounce your name, man. I am so sorry. We got him all set up in the project to fully implement the audio for Winchar. And let me tell you guys, thank goodness we got him on because no one wanted to hear my audio mixing skills. You can tell by my devlogs, they are just too phenomenal to be such a project. So while I was lollygagging and making weapons, you know, spinny spin, and doing other more, um... Alright, let's play some Siege, got nothing better to do. Let's get the squad going. Oh wait, is this still recording? Crap. Important things, um... Yeah, uh, Do started to implement the sound effects he already made for the project, and I'm not gonna lie, like this, this was literally me listening to the sound effects for the first time. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just kidding, guys. So, I promise. On a more serious note though, Doe did an amazing job implementing these sound effects and I can just tell he will make this game way, way better. And I just cannot wait for that. In the last few devlogs, we gave the orcs attack animation a little bit of a makeover and I think it's time to give the player that same treatment. I wanted to combine both nice looking animations with player functionality in mind. I didn't want the animations to feel slow or out of place, but at the same time, I wanted them to look bonkers. This was quite a process to actually implement because I had to look through so many different animations and figure out exactly when the best time to transition between them was. But again, with some good old quality I managed to get them in and I made them look as snazzy as ever. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Now with all that technical stuff out of the way, let's talk world design. This is my first ever time taking world building seriously and focusing on making a fun and enjoyable world that the player can run around in. Before, we had Post Critical handle all the world building for Winshire, but with school getting in his way, he was unable to continue development in this world, so um, honestly, completely understandable. Same thing happens to me. But with him not being able to help out, it was left up to me to make this thing possible. So yeah, Winshire is screwed. <laughs> Why are you filling in water under the land? Don't ask me questions I don't know! <laughs>
Now going into this, I had a rough idea of what the Phase 2 map would be and how I wanted the actual map to be shaped. The map for Phase 2 would actually be just a small chunk of the map I drew up in a previous devlog, so go check it out if you haven't seen it already. More specifically, it would be this island. I decided to take my first crack at making this map on stream, and well, if you remember what I said earlier, well... I wasn't wrong. Even Excelsius had to step in and had to call me out on the bad design. So remind me to cut his pay at the end. I'm definitely, it was probably a good idea to first of all, I mean, let's be honest, every developer has had this thing where he goes on stream, tries to make something and realizes that he didn't do any research. <laughs> Once I finally got the rough layout for the map all situated, it was time for texture painting. I knew I couldn't just spam the map with a bunch of grass like I have done in the past because, well, a lot of you guys actually care about the performance and that, that wouldn't be the best idea. Rather, I bit the bullet and decided to purchase some low poly textures and use them for the time being. It took me a while to actually get everything to look how I wanted it to, but it was definitely worth the price tag. With the basic texturing over with, it's time to get at least some big old trees into the scene and make it look a little bit more lively. Because right now, it's looking a little basic. But at the same time, I wanted to make sure the forest weren't too densely packed because I wanted the combat to be able to be comfortably fought in the forests. So keeping both of those in mind, I used a lower density of the brush for the trees and made sure they all stood a bit further apart than usual. So you know what? I guess you could say they're social distancing. <laughs> Finally, it was time for the details, and oh boy, do I love details. Well, that was honestly sarcastic, because putting these stupid, stupid rocks on the exterior of the island, why did I decide to put myself into that? Why do I hate myself? Like, what was going through my head? But you may be asking yourself, wouldn't all those boulders cause a hit to the performance? And well, plainly... I really hope not, but I guess time will only tell. But we reduced it by combining all the meshes using a tool we got off a humble bundle called Mesh Combined Studio, which heavily increases performance by combining all the loose meshes on your map together and overall decreases the number of batches needed to render them. So yeah, basically call me Mr. Pro Developer. Oh, we also like disabled water reflections because that was like taking double the time to render and caused performance to literally drop by half. Like, it was like one singular checkbox increased performance by like double, so it was a no-brainer. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of the map so far in the comments below and what I should add into the map next. If you want to support us, go check out our Patreon page. We are posting a lot of awesome posts such as the first boss in Windshire. We don't want to reveal what Excelsius has done just yet, but he has been making some very, very sexy models for the game. In addition, he has released his own asset pack, which includes a ton of low poly weapons. So if you guys are interested in getting your hands on some of your own low poly swords made by the person who makes the swords for Winshire, go check out the link in the description below. They look a hundred times better than what we have in Winshire currently. So that's kind of a problem, but you guys can get your hands on them. So links down in the description below. And if you are new and enjoyed this video, let me know in the description below. I would love to meet all the new viewers and if you have stuck around to this point, type lemon down in the comments below so I know who's the real one. Anyways, a huge thank you to Token. Thank you man for being such a huge supporter. You mean a lot to the dev team. And thank you to Inconspicuous, Max, Munchior, Tajna, Michael, and Dennis. You guys have been amazing.
amazing so far and I love the support you guys give. And finally, thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you guys in the next devlog. Peace.